The Garden is an open, inclusive, Christ-like community where people from many paths gather to explore, engage, and seek inspiration to transform our world through the unconditional love of God. Explore. Engage. Inspire. Join us online, in person, and in the community while featuring local artists. Grow with us online Sundays at 9.15 a.m. Ah! glad you're here. Hello, friends. We're glad you're here. Welcome to the garden. I come to you today from Taylor University, where this week I have participated in the 67th year of choir school. Now, they missed school last year, but joined together again this year to share in some singing. And then I also provide some spiritual classes. Today we're concluding our series, What Do You Stand For?, focusing on what it is that we as individuals are called to stand for. You will hear two really special stories from gardeners who have committed themselves to causes that are very important to them. Welcome. We're really glad you're here. Hello, gardeners. Wow, I have so much to share with you today, and I'm not sure it's all gonna fit in this time slot that's been allotted to me, but we'll see what I can do. And remember, anything I say here, you can find more information about it on the links page of our website at thegardenonline.org links. So let's go in order so it's easy to remember. This Thursday, coming up this Thursday, we're having a back to school pool party for the garden children and youth, affectionately known as the Seedlings and Sprouts. Garden parents Jillian and Joe Pruitt will be hosting the party at their neighborhood clubhouse located in Carmel. It's this Thursday at 6 p.m. More details and RSVP methods are online. Now next Sunday is our drive through communion at Wish Park. Wish Park is located just east of Michigan Road on 71st Street or what we call West Lane Road. This particular communion will have a little extra in store for those who attend, so set yourself a reminder to be part of this monthly time together, Sunday at 11 a.m. Also in the month of August, we will serve at Soup's On. It's a joint ministry between Roberts Park United Methodist Church located downtown. There are two ways you can help. You can prepare peanut butter and jelly sack lunches ahead of our service date on August 15th, or you can serve the sack lunches to those in need on Sunday, August 15th. Sign up for either on our website, thegardenonline.org links. Our next in-person service is Sunday, August 22nd. So save the date. We'll have more details next week. Spoiler alert, we have selected a different venue and no reservations will be required. You won't want to miss this special gathering. So I'm almost done, but one last thing, significant and a notable mention. Now, most of you have probably received a very special invitation in the mail from the garden. Yes, you are all invited to the 25th, going on 26th anniversary celebration on Friday, September 17th. The pandemic prevented us from celebrating the 25th anniversary and we're making good on it here in this 26th year. So the celebration will be the event of the year in the life of the church and we want you there. Space is limited at the venue. The venue is actually the barn in Zionsville. So don't wait, RSVP today. Also, if you'd like to help canvas our local area for event sponsors, donations for our silent and live auctions, or just lend a hand to Becky Cheatham, the event organizer, please connect with Becky or the office staff. We've created a special event page at thegardenonline.org slash 25. That's easy to remember, slash 25, like the 25th year. Here, you can learn more details and RSVP by purchasing tickets. Is that it? Did I keep it all within the three minute time slot? <sighs> I think so. So now let's settle down all this excitement. Settle it down as we settle in to service. We're so glad you are here. Good morning, gardeners. Good morning. Join us in our words of welcome. Shalom. 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 Namaste. 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 
As we continue talking about things we stand for, I think about my one of my favorite musicals, Hamilton, and in it he says, if you stand for nothing, what will you fall for? And to me, that's so true. I personally stand for education, public education as a public school teacher. Vibrant public schools are essential. If we don't educate the youth, then our economy, 
our social, um, economic, everything will just fall apart. It's like in Proverbs when they say, speak up and judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Does speaking up make a difference? Trust in God. It may not feel like you're making a difference, but blessing others will come back to you. This means hang in there, doing good, it will have an impact on everyone involved. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, give me the courage to stand against the enemy today. I put on the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sandals of gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and the shield of faith. Thank you for the promise that greater is he that is in me than that is in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi gardeners, I'm Patrice Bradley, and I've been a volunteer child advocate or CASA for a little over five years. In that role, I advocate for the best interests for children who have been victims of abuse or neglect. When I initially get assigned to a case, the children are typically placed in a foster home. So my first order of business is to visit those children there and make sure that that foster home is a safe environment for the kids. I also spend time talking to the foster parents, understanding what has been going on with the kids before I got assigned. And I may be making recommendations based on that for additional support for those children, such as therapists or tutors at school. As the case progresses, I'm really just overall keeping tabs on what's going on throughout the case, both with regard to the children as well as the parents. It's important for me to be able to make a recommendation when we go to court every three months um, with regard to whether or not the children should continue to plan to transition home or in some cases um, whether it might be better to move forward with adoption either by foster parent or another family member. Overall, what do I stand for? I stand for the best interests of the children that I serve.
Won't you stand up, you girls and boys? So today we conclude our series, What Will You Stand For? We spent the month looking at what different people have chosen to stand for and what they've been willing to give up from our founding fathers to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and their willingness to stand and to fall for God. And then last week, Taylor Hall and her story and work with Black Lives Matter and youth and as well as her beautiful songs about how God is working and unfolding in her life. Today, the question is for all of us, though. What are we willing to stand for? What's important enough to you that you're willing to stand and to take a stand on a particular issue? Now, there sure enough is plenty in today's world that we could take a stand for, isn't it? I mean, it seems like the last 18 months has provided opportunity after opportunity for us to get engaged in something that might be important to us, from the Black Lives Matter cause to uh, issues around gun control to issues around being vaccinated or not vaccinated. These seem to be issues that are important to people and issues that people are willing to stand for. Well, what is it that's important to you that you're willing to stand for? What's important enough to you that you'll take it to the streets and share in debates? Well, if you're looking for some guidance, we actually can get some. And it's right from the gospel. And it's from Jesus. We get to see time and time again how he carefully uses wisdom, discernment, and passion to determine what it is that he is going to stand up for. Now, one might think that Jesus is always standing up for issue after issue, but if you look closely at the Bible, you will, you will find that there are times where Jesus steps away from an argument. Not only does he step away, but he encourages others that if there is a situation or something where you don't feel like you can make a difference, then perhaps you need to shake the dust off of your feet and keep moving on. I'm going to look at a text today. When Jesus returns after he's been baptized and he returns to Nazareth, his hometown, and he enters into the temple. And when he goes into the temple, they recognize him as their teacher. And as their teacher, he is given a scroll and when he is given that scroll, he reads what is written from the prophet Isaiah. And he says this, God's spirit is on me. He's chosen me to preach the message of good news to the poor, sent me to announce pardon to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to set the burdened and the battered free, to announce this is God's time to shine. He rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the assistant and sat down. Every eye in the place was on him intent. Then he started in. You've just heard scripture make history. It came true just now in this place. Now in that moment, Jesus was proclaiming that the prophet that Isaiah was talking about that would be coming or the Messiah that would be coming, he was proclaiming that he was the one. Now imagine walking into your home church and saying something that maybe perhaps the people you grew up with are not necessarily ready to hear. Well, this crowd was not ready to hear that. 
And quite frankly, they were pretty upset. In fact, they were so upset that it set everyone in the meeting place seething with angry anger. They threw him out, banishing from banishing him from the village. Then they took him to a mountain cliff at the end of the village to throw him to his doom. But he gave them the slip and he was on his way. Now, I find that interesting. Jesus very well could have used that moment, right, to stand up and truly pro proclaim what God had brought him here for. But he doesn't do that. He doesn't make that huge proclamation again at the mountainside. He doesn't let them throw him off and come back again. He doesn't perform some miracle or some healing. He simply slips away. There is something about this particular experience that Jesus does not see is worth his time or energy to take a stand. He knows that God has something much more in store for him. He uses his wisdom not to get involved in the emotion and the feeling of the moment. He uses discernment to decide that perhaps this is not the time to share this incredible gift of healing. And then he also realizes that his passion and his love for God, well, that will be wasted here. So he gives them the slip, as Eugene Peterson says it, and he moves about his way. Have you ever been in a situation where perhaps someone challenges you in such a way and even pushes you to the edge? I think what Jesus teaches us today is to really be mindful when that happens to us. Is this really wise, a wise conversation for us to get into? Are we in a position where we can discern, is this really what God is calling me to do? And is this a topic that we have enough passion to stand on? Are we willing to stand on this topic and issue no matter what? I think it's a good lesson for all of us. Now, if that's how Jesus kept it, it might be easy, but that is not the case. We see, and we'll look at another gospel at where Jesus makes a very different decision. It's found in the gospel of Matthew, the 21st chapter. In it, he goes into the temple once again, and there he finds people, well, kind of selling things, kind of taking up a lot of space, a lot of space that's keeping people who need to know the love of God out. Not only are they taking up space, but they're offering people different uh, offerings or sacrifices that they could then share in the temple, and they're just stealing money from these people to get it done. Well, this isn't okay for Jesus. The temple was not a place where some people were able to get in and pay their way in and other people were not. So Jesus discovered this, this terrible practice going on. And he went straight to the temple and threw out everyone who had set up shop buying and selling. He kicked over the table of the loan sharks and the stalls of the dove merchants. He quoted this text, my house was a designated house of prayer. You have made it a hangout for thieves. Now there was no room for the blind and the crippled to get in. They came to Jesus and he healed them. Maybe you recall this particular text where he turns over the tables and he says, you will not do this to God's house. It's a very different reaction than the re reaction he had in his own hometown, isn't it? It's a reaction that called him to action and to take a stand. And in this particular uh, space, to take a stand for the blind and the crippled. And he did so, some might say, violently. I think it's another example that Jesus leaves with all of us. It is when in his wisdom that he makes this decision. Now, if you recall, the temple there and the temple in today's world is meant for all people. But something had happened in this particular situation where not all people were welcomed in. So he took a stand and he made space. He made space for people. Now, in his wisdom, he did that. Why? 
because scripture tells us and he must have known that the temple would fall at the hands of money changers and loan sharks and people who were doing business in the temple. In fact, the temple does fall. In Jesus' wisdom, he knew things needed to change dramatically, that life needed to look different, or God's love would not be available to all people. And actually, that did come true. He discerned and moved forth with great passion, great passion for his love for God to tear the place apart and make room for God's children. Certainly another example for all of us. In the last 18 months, we have been witness to people who have done just that. People have made the decision to take a stand, to leave what's important to them, their families and their homes, and to march in the streets for causes that were important to them. Now here we are one year later from Black Lives Matter. And something tells me that the people who used wisdom discernment, and followed their passion are still involved in that particular cause. I would say the other political causes as well have kind of faded into the background. But there's probably still those people who are using their own sense of wisdom, who are discerning where God is calling them forth, and using a passion for the topics that are important to them. I think it's important to note this especially when we live in such a world where they say we are polarized. Perhaps we are polarized because we all have an opinion about something, but we really don't have a passion about these things. If you stay up late at night, you'll be able to see the, the local access channel for local governments. And on those local access channels, they have different things like zoning boards or public safety meetings. And in these public safety meetings, you'll often encounter people who are dealing with real topics and difficult topics that people need to look at. For example, all of the public safety work for getting more police on the streets of Indianapolis is made available on these different programs. In these programs, you will see that people are passionate and people are angry about the pain that has been created with the violence in our city. And those people are standing up so that their voices are heard. But then you will also have someone else who it is their job to discern as well how many people the police need to have in order to care for the people of Indianapolis, what it is statistically that is creating the violence and the challenges that our city is facing. You will hear debates back and forth about what is important. And what's most interesting to me is as I watch these different hearings, I come to see that sometimes I will have an opinion, but I will not take the time that these people have taken to truly discern what they're going to stand up for, to truly discern what is needed for the whole of our city, for all people everywhere. A friend of mine who is a pastor in Naperville, Illinois, was involved in the city zoning for a local mosque in their community. She talked about how fascinating it was to be involved in those conversations and to witness to people who thought that there were people truly trying to keep people out, and there probably were. But then there were other people who were truly dedicated to traffic patterns in the community and how this new traffic pattern would be need, need to be created around the mosques so that people could get in and out for prayer. It was clear as she listened to the person who was working on the traffic patterns that this person had a passion to ensure that people could travel to the places they needed to be and be at temple or to the grocery store in ways that got them there efficiently and safely. This person used their wisdom, their discernment, and their passion for getting people around the community to discern how to best move forth. I think that's an important thing to note as we move forth in life these days. Too often, we 
decide that we have made a decision based on some news story we heard over 90 seconds, or we make a decision based on what someone else has said to us or tweeted to us or put on Facebook. And we really haven't taken the time to seek wisdom, to discern, and to really determine if we're passionate about a particular item. May we move forth in the week to come and in the weeks to come, being mindful, yes, that we're all called to stand for something. We're all called to stand for the least, the last, and the lost. But we must do so with wisdom, discerning what is best, and passion and love in our hearts. May we stop this polarizing conversations and find a way to slip our way out of those things that don't make a difference for people who need healing, people who need to know love. Instead, let us truly move deep within and discern what God is calling us to stand for and move forth in such a way that the love of God works when you stand, when you are wise, discerning, and passionate. Friends, may you search your heart until you find really why God has given you life, breath, and movement. And may you always stand for that which is important. Amen. Hi there, my name is Mike Ransom, longtime gardener and volunteer supporting anti-hunger initiatives in Indianapolis. Hunger is the root cause of so many challenges we face as a society, from learning issues in children, to health crises in some seniors and the poor, to petty crime in forgotten neighborhoods. After retiring from Lilly, I served on the board of the Indy Hunger Network for several years, developing a program called Summer Servings for Kids When They Are Out of School. More recently, I have been involved with Bread for the World, supporting the annual offering of letters to our congressional representatives advocating for both national and global initiatives to address the debilitating effects of hunger wherever the need is greatest. I stand up for this cause because food security is a universal basic societal need, and proactively addressing it can have an immediate, significant impact on individuals and their quality of life.
Sick and tired of your ism, schism, game dying on going to heaven. In Jesus' name, Lord, we know when we understand. Almighty God is a living man. You can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. So now, now we see, see the light. light. You gotta stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your rights. Keep on going. Get up, stand up, don't stop. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. Get up, stand up. Get up, get up. Stand up for your rights. Get up, stand up. Get up, get up. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up. Don't give up the fight. Don't give up. Don't give up the fight. 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 So the question today is, what will you stand for? What is it that God has given you some wisdom and discernment for and then passion? God will give you what you need to either slip away or stand up strong. And now, may the love of our God be yours today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen.